Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update. I hope you're doing really great this morning and Franklin's wrath continues. It is going to persist and get worse as we head throughout today. So it is a slow moving system that will be around for some time in the Dominican Republic, unleashing very dangerous conditions that um, major flooding for some areas. And so before I go into details about this, please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update. And I also want to go into the fact that we could see development or next storm of the season might come from the Western Caribbean. So we will be looking at that potential later down in this video. But firstly, we want to briefly talk about the other systems out there. So let's look at the latest map coming from NHC. There we have Depression Herald now over northeastern Mexico, maybe producing some periods of heavy rainfall still. And of course, with that heavy rainfall, there is going to be that chance of flooding, especially in those more in mountainous areas as we head in the caribbean there we have franklin just offshore uh still a couple of hours out from landfall and then there we have our next two disturbances out there that one is actually in association with the remnants of emily and once it redevelops if it redevelops into a tropical depression or tropical storm it will regain the name emily it's not going to get a new name but there we have 92l imminent development of that one is pretty much unlikely right now so the formation chances down to 40%. It has been at 40% for some time, but has been at the maximum of 70%. So uh, it is unlikely that we're going to see any imminent development of this. And so the next name to be used for this hurricane season is Idalia. The next two names, Idalia and Jose. So a pretty decent chance that we could see something come from the Caribbean. And uh, I'll be going on to that later in this video, as I said. But the main concern right now is Franklin. As we look at the satellite imagery of the Caribbean. Here we can see the cyclone over in the Western Caribbean. There's a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity taking place right now. So there's a lot of moisture in the area contributing to that instability, which in turn leads to those thunderstorms developing. So some areas, not everywhere, are experiencing some periods of uh, heavy downpours at times, maybe even uh, just some thunderstorms, uh, windy conditions for some of us as well. And uh, maybe it is just sunny. So there is a wide variety of different weather conditions being experienced at this time in the Western Caribbean. But look over in the Eastern Pacific. This could be the the birthplace of our next tropical cyclone. As I said, we're going to be uh, delving into details later down in this video, but all this activity that we're seeing is going to be drifting over into the Caribbean, the Western Caribbean, where we could see some development take place and eventually a system headed toward the Gulf of Mexico. But uh, going over into the east, as we return to this satellite imagery here, this zoom here, we can see that things aren't so bad to the east of the Leeward Islands is the remnants or are the remnants of Gert. So not a problem for the area. Not going to be inducing any rainfall throughout today. And for many areas, it should be a pretty sunny day. But there could be some rainfall activity coming from Franklin in the vicinity of the ABC Islands, even for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands as well. Now this area here, this is where we have a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of heavy rainfall, and that triggers the flooding that is expected, the mudslides. And then all this is going to be moving in because it is rotating counterclockwise. All tropical cyclones in the northern hemisphere rotate in a counterclockwise or anti-clockwise fashion. So all this activity is going to be moving in. Some areas have already experienced a lot of heavy rainfall. And so with all of this yet to come, that could mean some really significant flooding because the soil gets saturated and uh, the water cannot just infiltrate or enter the soil very easily. So it just piles upon the surface, especially a large volume of water very quickly. So I'm hoping that everyone is currently doing okay and will be okay as Franklin makes its way through and this activity is going to be persistent throughout today. Let's go on to the National Hurricane Center's cone forecast for it and here we can see that uh, it is moving to the north at 10 miles per hour. Not very slow but it is going to be persistent 
uh, at least up until early tomorrow morning. But then by that time, the Turks and Caicos Islands could be impacted with those tropical storm conditions, those tropical storm force winds, and uh, even a lot of heavy rainfall, which may trigger flooding as well. After which, as we head to this weekend, it is likely to become a hurricane by early next week. It might move to the west of Bermuda, but if it manages to be in very close proximity, it could produce some uh, dangerous conditions for the island. But I'll be keeping you guys posted on that. There is still uh, there is still likely to be some changes. If you notice, this cone here widens a lot. That's because the center can pass anywhere within it from the far left to the far right. So I will be keeping you guys posted on it. But for now, a lot of heavy rainfall, mudslides likely today across, especially the Dominican Republic, maybe some parts of Haiti. And that uh, shaded yellowish region right there, that is indicating the uh, extent of those tropical storm force winds. So as a matter of fact, the cyclone has re-strengthened. It weakened yesterday due to the wind shear. So when the hurricane hunters flew in and collected that data, they found that sustained winds were not up to 50 miles per hour anymore. So uh, the system was down to 40 miles per hour. Very weak tropical storm. Now it's back up to 50 miles per hour. Tropical storm force winds likely already making their way on shore and even re resulting in that storm surge uh, the winds of the system pushing the waters on shore so some coastal areas some immediate coastal areas might be inundating as I speak and uh, even though the winds might do a bit of damage we're not talking about a very very strong winds here there could still be some downed trees some downed power lines damage to very weak structures but the main concern is the heavy rainfall that this is going to be unleashing that it will continue to unleash for some areas most of the Dominican Republic go into parts of Haiti and then eventually for the Turks and Caicos Islands and some of those bands could even make their way into Puerto Rico where uh, they could unleash some intermittent heavy rainfall at times there and so guys I'll be keeping you posted on all that is happening with this again this is going to be persistent throughout today going into tomorrow because we're not talking about a storm that's moving very very quickly but for some areas conditions are likely to improve quicker than for others for example over in Haiti uh, Haiti might be spared some parts of Haiti might be spared from the worst of this and uh, that is due to the wind shear so even though the center is right here and the winds are rotating around the system what happens is that uh, the strongest winds are over to the east because that is where we see all that activity taking place and the wind shear uh, those west winds coming in from the west in the upper atmosphere they kind of just displace all this activity so we find that the western side of Franklin is not producing as much shower and thunderstorm activity and that is the reason some parts of Haiti will be spared as Franklin moves through okay guys and now we want to go ahead and talk about the potential of that Caribbean system will our next high name storm be another one to go into the Gulf of Mexico and cause some issues let's take a look at the potential of that happening so we're returning to this satellite imagery here as I showed you guys earlier there's a lot going on over in the eastern Pacific the monsoon trough is very active now it is an elongated area of low pressure so there's a lot of rising air motion that happens that warm air it rises and as it increases in height or altitude the temperature gets cooler so it condenses to form clouds and eventually we get lots of these thunderstorms developing so that is what we see happening over here right now that's what's going on lots of thunderstorms over in parts of the eastern pacific now some of this activity is going to be drifting into the caribbean where we could eventually see some development so let's go ahead and now take a look at what models have to show and so let us go ahead and kick start with the GFS model and it has not been showing that we will see anything in the Gulf uh, for some time now and so uh, as we take a look at it as we head into next Tuesday though there we're seeing all that moisture so all that uh, activity is going to move in coming from the Pacific and then eventually we're seeing that the model is showing all that moisture increase across the eastern Gulf and parts of western Cuba eventually something trying to form and making its way into Florida. So this could be the model slowly coming on to what other models such as Euro, Icon and the Canadian have been consistent about. Let's head on to the Canadian model now. So the Canadian model is expecting that we will see rather quick development. We're going to have that low pressure area meandering in the Northwest Caribbean off of uh, 
uh, Honduras and then eventually making its way over Western Cuba and into Florida, intensifying pretty quickly and uh, becoming something quite strong there, something similar to Ian. So Ian has been, uh, Ian was a very destructive hurricane that has been traumatic for many persons and to see something else like this would just be absolutely awful, especially an IE named Storm because Idalia is the next name and before this, back in 2021, Ida was also a major hurricane that made landfall. It was almost a Cat 5. Ian was actually a Cat 5, not initially, but the postseason analysis done earlier this year confirmed that the cyclone was actually a, uh, a Category 5 hurricane and then the next name for this season is Idalia and signs are pointing toward this potential Caribbean system. Let's head on to the icon model. Another one of our accurate models out there. So Icon is also showing that we're going to have all this moisture lifting in the Caribbean going into the Gulf where we could eventually see something develop. Eventually, we have that low pressure area develop, make its way over Cuba, and then into Florida. So I cannot show it anything near as strong compared to the Canadian model. And then finally, we're taking a look at the Euro model. Now, Euro is definitely showing all of that increase in moisture as we head to the middle part of next week. But in terms of seeing something develop, it was expecting that, hey, we could even have a Category 1 hurricane making landfall in Florida. But now it is not showing that. We're seeing something likely to organize maybe a tropical depression or even a tropical storm but here we have some consistency there has been some consistency about this potential gulf system which is not uncommon to see at this time of year uh, there have been many major hurricanes this time of year uh, late august going into early september that rapidly intensified in the gulf of mexico so this is something to look out for as we head into the mid to latter part of next week as of the latest update the national hurricane center has not highlighted anywhere in the caribbean to see our development but i'm expecting that with the models being consistent about this eventually we will have somewhere to watch as we head into maybe this weekend going into early next week and so guys i'm here to keep you updated so that you're never caught off guard and that is pretty much it for right now i hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'll respond once i get the chance to and as always remember to be otherwise